As many of you know, I oversee all the fresh fruit and vegetable purchasing at Costco. But what, what you may not know about me is that um, I consider myself a student, uh, a permanent student, really, um, because I work on education and understanding my business and technology and new developments on a regular basis. And as part of my education, I learned about a great company, and I'm up here to talk to you about that today. So I'm excited to be sitting here and talking about Hylion, and uh, in meeting Thomas, uh, very excited about the work that he is going to be doing um, with the trucking industry, trying to make them efficient and innovative. Thank you, Heather. Well, it's terrific to be here, and uh, I know this is a little bit of a change in conversation from what you're actually doing on the farm, but our focus for this session is going to be how can we help improve you from when you actually create these produce, produce to actually getting them to the store, places like Costco. So um, I'd like to just give you a very high level on what Hylion is. Uh, so we're bringing hybrid electric technology to the trucking industry. So this is very similar to what you would see in a Toyota Prius or in Tesla, uh, where we can capture that wasted energy, store it in a battery pack, and help reduce the amount of fuel that the vehicle consumes. So I think we have a little video to show you just to bring the technology to life. So what we do is uh, we bring this hybrid technology and we also help reduce and eliminate truck idling. Uh, and so we have a battery pack, electric motor, uh, and what we do is we go in and replace one of the passive axles under the trailer with our electric propul propulsion system. Uh, and so the way this works is when the vehicle is slowing down or going downhill, it's capturing wasted energy. Uh, that energy then gets stored in a lithium ion battery pack and then we can use that vehicle down the road to help reduce emissions. And what I was saying is that you've got the hybrid, the auxiliary power unit, which uh, you basically can use our batteries to um, run air conditioning, uh, play a TV, whatever the driver does in the, in the evenings. And so here's a video of the technology actually working where you see the truck on the left uh, is using our technology, only consumes about six gallons uh, while climbing a hill. A, no a truck that doesn't have our technology consumes about 20 and vice versa, going downhill, we can recharge that battery pack. Uh, and this is actually the installation process where we go in and replace one of those existing axles with our electric axle. So it's an add-on retrofit technology. You don't have to go out and buy a new asset. You keep that truck and trailer you already own, and we just improve the fuel economy of that asset. So just a high-level overview. That's but. great. <laughs> So what drove you to focus on the trucking industry? Yeah, so uh, in all forms of the word, we're a startup company. We've been around for about two years now. Uh, we've got 30 employees. We're located in Pittsburgh. And uh, when we were starting this company, we looked at uh, trying to impact an industry, trying to really be able to make a, a big change. And so when we looked at trucking, it's one of those industries that hasn't really had a revolution and a big quantum leap forward in emissions. Like in the car industry, we saw uh, electric technology come in five to 10 years ago, and that's had a huge impact on emissions that we see from daily automobiles. But the trucking industry hasn't yet had that. And so we saw it as a great opportunity to be able to go in and make a huge change on an industry. That's great. How are you going to revolutionize the <laughs> trucking industry? Uh, so we look at revolutionize as a couple of different things, right? One is um, what, what effect can we have on the fleets and what effect can we have on kind of our planet and our globe? And so when we look at fleets, um, one of the things we've found is 
you can't force a green technology on fleets unless it's something that the customers are demanding, if the government's demanding it, but if there aren't either of those initiatives, the only way you're going to get a fleet to actually adopt a green technology is if it also saves them money, right? I mean, it's, this industry is uh, operating on such slim profit margins, about 5%, that you can't come in and say, well, you gotta do this green technology but not have a benefit for them. And so, uh, so that's, that's kind of um, one of the unique things with uh, bringing something to the trucking industry is it needs to have both effects, right? It needs to be able to improve their bottom line, improve their profitability, uh, but then we get to see the benefit of reducing the overall emissions. Great. So what kind of impact do you think that Hylion can make on the trucking industry and CO2 emissions? So when we look at the trucking industry, it's, there's two million trucks out there on the road, six million trailers. Uh, as you guys well know, it's a huge industry. Uh, so we just kind of looked at it as uh, kind of looking at the U.S., how big of an impact could this be? Well, if all trucks in the U.S. became hybrid trucks, we could reduce the amount of CO2 emissions by about 150 million metric tons. Now, uh, that's kind of just a, a blanket number. So what does that actually mean? So that's the same amount of em emission reduction as if we eliminated 25% of all the emissions that come from the agricultural sector. sector. Um, and then also it's the same as if uh, we eliminated two weeks worth of all of our oil consumption during a year. So by adding a technology like this, it has a, a drastic impact on both oil consumption, the amount of emissions there are, and uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, something that can be a global scale. Those of you who either grow or process uh, fresh fruits and vegetables know that about half of what we do is logistics and trucks. So that's a tremendous impact if you think about it. On a week like this, uh, which is a huge week at Costco because of the 4th of July, we have about 1,500 produce trucks alone inbound to our distribution system just to get us full for the week, uh, for the big week. We do about 100,000 trucks in a year. Um, so something like this could be a major impact. So how do you look at like a new technology coming into uh, your company? You know, I think that uh, we're always looking for cost savings, efficiencies, and a win-win for both us and our partners. Um, and something like this could be, you know, certainly from the farm all the way to the member have savings for us. That's terrific. Now, one of, um, one of the things that we usually get asked, which I think, uh, I'm sure some of you in the audience have kind of thought about this as well. We've seen a lot of transitions happening in trucking, both from electrification and from autonomous vehicles. Uh, so there's been a lot of PR around Tesla is going to be coming out with an electric truck. Uh, there's a company called Nikola Trucking that's doing a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. And so the industry is ready for change and this is something that is coming. And it becomes a question of what technology is going to be best for the vehicles that you're shipping on. So I know a lot of fleets right now are focused on one or two percent savings that they can get from aerodynamics or low rolling resistance tires. Um, but in order to see that kind of huge leap, leap forward in, in fuel uh, reductions, you need to bring in an alternative energy source. So the question for you is what application or what product is going to make the most sense? Uh, so when we look at a fully electric vehicle, this is terrific for city driving or local deliveries or even getting product around the farm. Uh, but when we look at over the road and long haul trucking, you would need about 50,000 pounds worth of batteries just to do one day's <laughs> worth of travel. So it's not really an applicable thing yet. <laughs> so, so that's why we focused on this hybrid uh, technology where you're not going to see 100% reduction in your fuel consumption, but you can get 30% with a product that uh, costs significantly less than going fully, fully electric, and it has that benefit of it's just an add-on, a retrofit. Um, technology. So for, for you, it's going to be a question of what type of shipping are you trying to do? And then does hybrid, does fully electric, does hydrogen fuel cell, which application is going to make the most sense? What has the initial response been? Uh, so what we found is um, 
the industry as a whole has actually really embraced us. Uh, we kind of thought we were going into an industry that's normally looked at as the, the old boys club, right? And uh, so we figured that this was going to be a, a huge challenge just to even get fleets to look at what we're doing and consider it. But what we found is fuel is the number one pain point. In trucking, about 38% of OPEX comes from fuel consumption. So the fact that we're going in and having such a big impact on their number one pain point uh, has caused us to just see a tremendous response from the industry. So in the U.S. here, we're working about with about 50 fleets. Uh, and just a couple of weeks ago, we signed on actually the, uh, the largest uh, seller of foods that is going to be bringing the technology over to Europe. Well, that's exciting. How long does it take to actually um, do the uh, installation? So we've got it down to about a 15 minute process. Now that was, we were working hard. Uh, <laughs> actually, our head of marketing is out here, uh, Kim Casey. She was part of this 15 minute challenge, but uh, it's a very easy installation. You take the trailer you already own, you undo eight bolts, the whole axle assembly drops right off the trailer, and you can bring in this wow. new electric technology. So it's a pretty easy installation. That's impressive. So what's the one thing that drives the company, and what are you passionate about? Yeah, so what really drives us is that we see that we're having a big impact. Uh, we see that, it, actually I'll tell you a little story where we had a, we had a fleet come in, it was about a hundred truck fleet, and the gentleman came in, went for a ride around in our tractor tra trailer, watched those displays that you saw in the video where you can kind of see the change in fuel consumption in real life. And uh, he walked away saying that this was something that he was going to want to adopt and introduce into his fleet. And, uh, and then a week later, we got a call from him. He, he said, hey, I want to I wanna run an idea by you. I created this whole plan of how I'm going to grow my business based off of hybrid technology. <laughs> so I can reduce my shipping costs, I can improve my profits to 15%, and it'll allow me to beat out my competitors and offer lower prices to actually ship these goods. So it's kind of this, uh, at first it's the skepticism, right? Because the industry's heard a lot of technologies uh, that have been promising fuel savings, and they're conventionally looked at as snake oil, right? They don't really believe them until they actually see them. And so uh, it's kind of that you bring a fleet in, you work with them, they actually see it working, and then it becomes this aha moment of, well, what can this actually do to my fleet? That's great. So what are the next steps for the company? So uh, as a company, as I was saying, we are a startup company. We're just in the process of closing our Series A round of funding. And the next big stage for us is going into production and actually deploying these with uh, fleets that are out there. So. Right now, uh, we deploy fl trucks every morning out of our own facility. They go out and run hundreds of miles every day. Uh, but this is a controlled environment. We're, we're at that stage now where we're let, kind of letting the technology loose in the wild. Uh, so we we've brought in five fleets here in the U.S. that will start deploying it at the end of the summer. That's exciting. Maybe we can open it up to the audience for some questions. And I, I'd like to do that. But Thomas, I had one question. Is this just a retrofit opportunity at this point? Or are you talking to truck manufacturers that this might be something that actually comes out of the plant on new trucks? So we're seeing it as a technology that can go both ways. Uh, so we've actually had a tremendous uh, reception from both the trailer OEMs and the truck OEMs. Uh, some of the truck OEMs have already had us in their facilities and looking at where this could be installed right on their production lines. And so we see it as it goes both ways. Now, the, the key thing is um, we need to make sure that the kind of, from a price standpoint, makes, makes sense for the fleet. And so what we've done is we're actually leasing the technology so that it saves you more on fuel every month than you actually spend on the lease. And so then it becomes this kind of zero barriers to adoption because you're not outlaying a significant amount of capital to buy the technology. It's, it's saving you more than you're spending. And that's when the retrofit uh, part comes in because you can really convert a fleet over pretty quickly. Interesting. Do we have any other questions? We've got a few minutes. Anybody? Back over there. Uh, so the question was about payload capacity and how does the conversion affect it. And so uh, we are adding uh, about seven to 800 pounds onto the vehicle. 
Um, but the government is actually uh, very receptive to technologies like this, and they already have laws in place where you can increase your payload by upwards of 550 pounds by using technology like this. And there's actually a bill out there right now that would allow for an extra 2,000 pounds of payload. And so one of the neat things that we see is um, that we can kind of have zero impact of, the, of what you're able to ship uh, by adding this. Other questions? Hi there. Um, so this sounds like an incredible idea. And what we're thinking is, how come no one else thought about it before you? <laughs> so uh, the, there's a couple of reasons. So one of the big things is that um, really thanks to, to Tesla, batteries and motors and kind of EVs as a whole have gone through a big transition over the last 10 years. And uh, you can only imagine an 80,000 pound rig going down a highway, down a hill. That's a tremendous amount of energy that, that's, that's behind that vehicle. And so in order to capture that, you need to recharge battery packs at an extremely fast rate, which means uh, battery technology needs to be very advanced. And uh, you, so you, it gets to this point where what we're seeing right now is battery technology, motor technology has gotten to a point where it can sustain these, these type of uh, conditions that you see from trucks. And, uh, and now we're, we're getting to a point where we can also bring in a, a whole kind of um, smart side of this where we're connected to the cloud so you can see where these vehicles are located you can do over the air software updates which years ago that wasn't a feasible thing so it's really about technology's gotten to the point that uh, it's it's built to a point where you can uh, can now actually apply this to tractor trailers other questions So it, uh, it kind of goes back to physics uh, in terms of, oh yeah, so the question was, uh, does it make sense to just do one axle or does it make sense to do multiple? And so the whole goal of the technology is that we're capturing all the wasted energy. And so what we've done is we've got enough power out of just one axle that it can capture about like 80 or more percent of the wasted energy. So by adding another axle, it would really only help in extreme conditions. Um, so it's kind of one and done, and you're good to go. <laughs> Question back here? Yeah, actually, I had two. Um, the first being, um, do you provide this kind of technology for um, other vehicles aside from, like, big rigids, for instance? Yeah, so right now our focus has been on the kind of class eight, over the road tractor trailer, but one of the neat things that we see is in order to install this technology, all you really need is a passive axle, and then it can be applicable to a wide range of vehicles. So any vehicle you see that has a passive axle, you could go in and retrofit it with this electric axle and then mount the batteries uh, on the frame of the vehicle, you're kind of good to go. So first, first target is, is big 18-wheelers, and then we'll look at other applications. Anything for farm equipment, <laughs> tractors and stuff? Uh, so that's one of those things that we see uh, once we, once we kind of get the initial product out on the road, uh, then we'll start looking at other applications. Okay, and I know this is now three questions, but <laughs> um, the third one being about service for something like this. This kind of technology is new. I don't think my maintenance team can necessarily work on this. Um, what would we do for service? Yeah, so service is always kind of the... Um, the number one question that comes back as to why we wouldn't want to adopt this technology is, well, what kind of service implications do you add? Uh, now, the neat thing is electric technology is just notorious for being extremely low maintenance. Uh, you don't have that internal combustion engine to, maintain, to maintain. Uh, batteries are kind of plug and play, you let them run. And so, just as a technology as a whole, it's kind of notorious for not needing significant amount of maintenance. 
But what we've done is we're partnering with service centers around the U.S. so that um, you would have locations that you could pull into and have the product serviced. And we've done it in a unique way where it's actually a modular replacement. So let's say a battery cell were to go bad, you would just replace the whole battery module as opposed to having a technician going in and actually trying to service it because that could be a, you know, you've got a high voltage system. That could be a safety concern. And uh, so it's the service centers around the U.S. as to where, where you would be able to get it uh, replaced or improved. Okay, great. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Hope you guys are as interested as I was. Thanks. Thank you, Tom.